So welcome to BOSU, the BOSU workout. So um, in this class, we're going to be working strength, obviously proprioceptive awareness, which is your balance and your neuromuscular remapping, um, as well as a little bit of cardio as well. So I always like to give the lay of the land for every class, especially if you're new, it's good to kind of know what to expect. So with this piece of, uh, uh, of equipment, um, one of the reasons why it's a mainstay in the, uh, the fitness industry is because it takes a regular strength training exercises and deepens it and gets the whole body moving in one cohesive unit. So you're going to see a lot of exercises that are not just focused on one individual muscle at a time, but the whole collective unit. So that being said, as we get into this workout, know that I'm never going to say do 16 of these, do 10 of these, do five of these, etc., etc. It really is work at whatever tempo and whatever um, range of motion feels good to you because we're trying to get everything to work together. Um, <coughs> obviously, keep it as aggressive as you feel is comfortable. The lay of the land is we're going to go through a couple of exercises just getting acclimated to this device and this body of ours <laughs> um, piece by piece. So the warm-up set is just going to be about 10, 10 minutes or so of just movement, movement, movement. Um, and then we're going to get into the first section. The first section is a toggle between strength conditioning and metabolic conditioning, meaning cardio. So we're going to be doing some timed intervals for some cardio exercises done at 15 seconds, four times through. And then we'll do a strength section that kind of complements it for one minute on each side. So to kick things off, what I'd like to do is just do a set of squats. Stand behind your balance trainer with your feet parallel and your heels nice and heavy. And I'd like for you just to find a tempo that feels good to you for you to sit down into an imaginary chair, down and up, and really driving through the heels. So you can feel the posterior musculature working. Watch that your torso is not dropping. A lot of what we're going to do today has to do with your core, so you want to make sure that the front of the core is able to work and not overstressing the back of the core. So heels heavy, chest lifted. And just kind of go through a set of squats until you feel a little bit of a burn. Really feeling your feet plant into the floor. About five more seconds. Nice and easy. Really feeling those legs charge up. And then from here, hold about a halfway squat. From here, we're going to step on the BOSU and then back off. So stepping on that balance trainer and off. So whichever leg is hitting the, the balance trainer first, that's called your lead leg. You want to maintain that low center of gravity as you just walk on and off of it. And then we're going to switch our lead leg in three, two, and one. Go and switch. So the opposite leg is going to strike the balance trainer first and then come on back up. Start to notice how your feet react to standing on air. So the reason why this is a balance trainer is because one of our main balance um, tools is the muscles and the neuromuscular uh, sensory stuff in your feet. When you're on air, they can't work as well because you're on mushy surface. So really kind of get used to utilizing your core a little bit more to find that balance. Then from here, we're going to really dive into trying to relax the feet, yet keep them active. Step a little bit further away from your balance trainer and just one leg at a time, uh, one leg first, go into a little bit of a lunge, press into the heel, and then push off. So start to notice if the foot is gripping or tensing, can you actually feel the foot expanding like a suction cup onto the balance trainer? About two or three more times, going a little bit lower to challenge yourself. You know you've gotten there when you feel a wobble or two, <laughs> and then go and switch to the other leg. Same thing. Start to identify which foot likes to tense up a little bit more. We all, ha we all have a better side. So this one will definitely highlight that, <laughs> that imbalance. And then again, trying to go as low as you can by dropping that back knee a little bit more each time as we get into that leg musculature, trying to relax the foot, but still keep it active and informed. About two more. Then we're going to go back into that walk up, walk down, but we're going to alternate legs. Here we go. Find a lower squat this time. Keep your shoulders the same height the whole time and walk on it and then walk off. Now the opposite leg leads up, up, down, down, switch legs up, up, down, down. Now my challenge to you is can you keep your shoulders the same height the whole time? So you're not going up, up, down, down. You're staying low, low, down, down. All right, about 10 more seconds here. And we'll do a nice little stretch that I love so much. <laughs> and go and rest. Good, from here, straddle the, the, the balance trainer. Hands go onto the dome, and then from here, just side to side. Drop the hip, drop the hip. So I'm bringing my hips 
up and over, sitting low with my toes forward. You should feel a stretch in your hips and your inner thighs. Breathing, breathing, breathing. All right, and the next thing we're gonna do is gonna be the balance challenge for the day. So I said that there were a couple of different mechanisms that your, body's, that your body relies on for balance. One of them is your inner ear. Another one is your feet. Another one is your core. Probably one of the more influential ones that we often don't think about is your eyes. Go ahead and bring it up. Go ahead and stand right on the balance trainer. Straddle the, the logo right on the center of that dome. Then from here, come down to your low squat. Hands are right in front of you. Now take a look at your fingers. All right, now, just for a second, just to see how important your eyes are, try closing your eyes for a, for a second. Don't change anything, just your eyes. Start to notice how much more wobbly it feels, right? Ooh, yeah, I know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eye focus on our hand, and I want you to take the hand out to the side, but let the eyes follow. And just alternate, hands together. Follow one hand to the side, still holding that low squat. Let those wobbles happen. That is part of your warm up. those wobbles that neuromuscular challenge is a part of the work. About 10 seconds more. If you're feeling pretty solid, try going lower. And then one more time, center it out and then close your eyes for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, wobbly, right? Two and one. It's exciting. Go ahead and stand it up, shake out the legs a little bit. Okay, from here, we're gonna find our bias squat. Go ahead and take one leg out to the side, plant it, then come back up. Plant it on the other side, come on back up. So you're finding a squat each time, but here's my challenge. My challenge is, can you have an even distribution of weight between both legs when you land? So that means that you're not stepping off and shifting into one leg. You're staying low and centered. If this is the case, one leg is going to have to work a lot harder than the other because it's more flexed, right? Now, this is called your bias squat because your legs are on a bias, right? From here, hold on to one side and just give me 10 squats or so, however many you need, trying to maintain that even distribution of weight. That means that one knee never gets to straighten. It stays bent the whole time. Go for about like two more and then come up on the other side, do the same thing, center it out. Even distribution of weight, and then go for a couple of squats. Just testing to make sure that you're in the right position. If you're doing so, if you're doing this correctly, the leg that is on the dome is gonna burn a lot more. Breathe through. I've got a little combo for you next. From here, what I want you to do is come to the original side. Go ahead and take the leg that is on the dome, step right behind it. My toes are right on the back of the dome. From here, the knee is going to go down and then back up. Lower down and back up. So I'm folding through the foot, down and then back up. Down and then back up. We're going to make this even more amazing. Are you ready for it? So the hands are going to go to the floor, out wide. Think like Spider-Man. Out wide. Now, make it more amazing. Let's go and take the leg that is on the floor and stretch it out. And then back up. Stretch it out. And then back up. So you're getting on and off the floor in this wonderful Spider-Man position. <laughs> Down and up. Go for one more, then we'll try the other side. And we're going to make it even more fantastic after this. Go and try the other side. One foot behind the dome, one foot right beside it. From here, kneel down and just tap the floor. Feeling the foot fold. Down and then back up. Down and then back up. Down. Really trying not to slam into the dome. Lower yourself down. Now let's add that leg. Down and out and then back up. Down and then out and then back up, down, and then down. Yep, about two more times. How am I gonna make this even more fabulous? I'm, I'm sure you're wondering, how could it get more fabulous than this? One more time, we're gonna add a kick thrust to it at the top. Let's go to the original side. All right, one foot beside the dome, one foot behind. We're gonna add the same thing here, but as you come up, this leg is gonna thrust into the floor and you're gonna kick front. Down, Spider-Man, kick. Down, Spider-Man, and kick. 30 seconds total, I've already started counting. 
doesn't have to be a super, super strong kick, but it needs to be one that comes from control. So you're really pressing all the way up and following through at the top for 10 more seconds. And get ready to switch sides. Here we go. Set yourself up 30 seconds. Go for it. Down and up. Ooh, this side sucks on me. <laughs> One hint, this leg that comes in, if you find the heel, it'll help you maintain your balance all the way up. If you stay on the ball of your foot, it's gonna make your balance a lot harder. So plant the heel to come up for that thrust. About 10 more seconds. Up three, two, and one. Go and rest. Ugh, good. Moving on. We're gonna go and flip this dome over. Dome side down. Hands are gonna go right where the handles are, and I want you to go into a plank position and just hold, breathe. Long thigh bones. I'll go profile so you can see this. Long thigh bones, no piking in the hips, shoulders pushing into the dome. Now from here, tip the bosu up and then down, up, and then down. So you're going north and south, north and south, north, south. Keep those thigh bones reaching, and south, north and south, maybe two more times, north and south, last one, north and south. Go ahead and give yourself a rest. We're gonna do the same thing. This time we're gonna go east and west. So you're gonna tip one side of the, the, of the balance trainer down and one side down, okay? Still long thigh bones. Here we go. Find your perfect plank. Here we go. Now, go left and then right. Left and then right. And tell me you don't feel your core. Left <laughs> and then right and then left. If you can, start to notice as you do this, your shoulders may want to go from side to side. Can you keep them centered and make it just about the arms, right? So no leaning, all pushing. About 10 more seconds. And then go ahead and rest. All right, roll out the wrists. We're gonna do some mountain climbers here. So mountain climbers, Come from the plank position, and it's gonna be one knee in, tap the platform, and then back to your plank. In, tap, and then down. In, tap, and then down, okay? Just that. Go ahead and join in if you haven't done so already. Just knee and tap. So there's a little bit of a dip in the pelvis to pull it down, and just feather tap with the knee. Feather tap. And then just to finish this off, get us ready for our metabolic stuff, we're gonna go into, just run it out. Here we go, run. 15 seconds. <sighs> Breathing as you do this, and remember your mountain climber is not just the knee coming in, it is also the knee striking back. So you wanna lengthen into that plank every single time. Good, 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 strong shoulders for five, three, two, one. All right, let's go and flip that sucker back up. All right, right, now one more thing left to do. We're gonna take both knees right to the center of the dome, walk it out into a kneeling push-up. From here, go ahead and count out like mm, 10 or 15, whatever you wanna challenge yourself with, and just give yourself elbows out push-ups, trying to keep the shoulders down. So elbows out means shoulders are probably gonna wanna shrug. Make sure the shoulders don't. Shoulder blades pulling into your back pockets. Count out 10 or 15, whatever feels good to you. And that'll be the end of your warm up. We're gonna get started on the cool part. <laughs> the cool part is going to be metabolic versus muscle is what we call this section. So we're gonna toggle between two different exercises all at a timed ratio. Go ahead and rest when you're done. Okay, so two exercises. The first one is gonna be your metabolic. This one is going to be profile behind your dome. We're going to bias squat onto the side of it bring both feet together to face it. So there's a twist there. And then the other leg twists you to the other side. Bring it back. Okay, now this is metabolic, so we wanna do that fast. It's gonna be 15 seconds of work for 15 seconds of rest four times through. It's gonna be two minutes, it's gonna be great. Here we go, ready, 
I'm actually gonna time it. Three, two, one, go. So get the basics first for the first 15 second round. Go low, go deep. And then as soon as you feel like you've got a good solid connected heel and not dropping the torso down, then you can go for speed. But for now, we're just cleaning up the movement and then go ahead and rest. 15 seconds, that's nothing. So you got 15 seconds to rest. Think about what you're gonna do. Are you gonna go deeper or are you gonna go faster? Here we go, five, four, round two, three, two, and one. Maybe down and down and down and down. So another way to think about this one is think like you're trying to squash your dome. Squash it. Three, two, and one, rest. So the twist is probably the hardest part, right? So really think about as, as you come in, get your heels together. Zoop, zip everything up, and then you're all the way around. So your turning is one piece. Here we go. Three, two, round three, go fast. Go. Low, deep, and fast for another four, three, two, one, and rest. Good, that's three rounds down. 15 seconds is nothing. The hit class was 40 seconds. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go for that final round, lowest, deepest, fastest, and totally controlled. And that's it. That's the end of this metabolic section for this one. Ready, set, and go. Down, and down, and down, and down. Three, two, one, rest. Okay, so now we're gonna go into muscles. So this one's longer and deeper. So this one, we're gonna go into something familiar, the bias squat. So the combination for this one is gonna be this, one big deep bias squat. Then from here, this hand is gonna replace the foot as the foot stretches back into a stretch. Nice long runner stretch. And then back into your bias. So bias squat, reach back. Buy a squat, reach back. You're gonna feel a lot of work in that standing leg. Here we go. One minute, ready, set, and go. Buy a squat low, reach long. Buy a squat low, reach long. Buy a squat. Remember the rules for the bias squat? Even distribution of weight from one leg to the other. The reach long, you just wanna make sure that leg is shooting super far back and the chest is open in a slight twist. So foot, then hand. So right about now, that leg is burning, burning. <laughs> it's good stuff. Breathing, breathing, breathing. You've got another 20 seconds left to go. Yes, good. Can you land soft on that bias squat so you're not like, oh God, thank God. <laughs> land nice and even and stretch nice and long. You have 10 seconds. We're gonna immediately go to the other leg. Ready for that transition time in Three, two, one. Find that bias squat. Bias squat. Lunge long. Bias squat. Lunge long. Bias squat. Lunge. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> Tons of work for that leg. Holy crap. <laughs> You have uh, 30 seconds left. Try to maintain that low center of gravity so you don't really get to come up and rest, right? You're staying low. Fight for that depth. Five, four, Three, two, and one. Whew. So that's the difference between metabolic and muscle. Now we're gonna take the metabolic a little bit higher. So this one, same thing, 15 seconds of work for 15 seconds of rest, four times three for two minutes total. It's only 15 seconds, so go for low and fast. This is gonna be just like your up, up, down, down that we did in the warm up, but it's gonna be a run, and it's gonna come from the side. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Now, here's the important detail. Remember, your lead leg is the one that strikes the balance trainer first. 15 seconds, lead with one leg. Second round, lead with the other. 
All right, so we're gonna alternate between sets. Here we go, 15 seconds, ready? Set and go. Up, up, down, down. Going as fast as you can, going as low as you can, and remember, try and inject all the stuff that, yes, Melissa, that's great. So as we're doing this, you're, you're, you're about, you wanna keep your shoulders low so you're not coming up and rest. Sorry, I almost missed that. <laughs> rest, that was your first 15 seconds. So you want to make sure that you're not coming up, up, down, down with the shoulders. You're staying nice and low, 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 low the whole time. Now, opposite lead leads. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Up, up, down, down. So if you need to start slow just to get the shoulders carried where you want them, that's still really good work. And then add the speed on top when you're ready. But you're almost done. Four, three, two, one. Rest. Deep breath. Go back to the original lead leg. Two more rounds left to go. So for now, breathe. Release any tension in your shoulders, in your jaw. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Good, 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 good. Still breathing, still low. And if it's not feeling like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being excruciatingly hard, if you're not at least at a six, go deeper or go faster. Three, two, one, rest. Looking really, really good. So we're gonna go for one more round. Lead leg now switches again. Here we go. Deep breath in, and then we'll go back into a muscle. Ready, three, two, one, go. Up, up, down, down. Thinking about the shoulders, and then going faster if you can. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. You're done in four, three, two, and one. Nice, good, 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 good. Go and rest. Now we're gonna go into the muscle. So the muscle, this one's a little bit of a funky one. Just remember, the main rule is you never get to come up. You're gonna want to. So we're gonna start with one leg right on the center of the dome, right on the bullseye. We're gonna go into a proposal style lunge. I'm gonna show you this from two different angles so you can see what I'm doing. Proposal style lunge, and then without coming up all the way, we're gonna take that back foot and then kickstand it right behind you on the dome. Lunge to kickstand. Lunge to kickstand. Most of the force is always gonna be on your standing leg. So from profile, looks like this. Drop the knee totally upright, then the back foot comes in to the back of the dome, kickstand. Most of my leg work is on that front leg. So we just go lunge, kickstand, lunge, kickstand. And the kickstand you should try not to use. It basically becomes a one-legged squat. Okay, here we go. One minute total for right leg, immediately one minute total for the left. Ready, set, and go. Lunge, kickstand. Lunge, kickstand. Lunge, whew, kickstand. So remember for these ones, it's about maintaining depth. This is not the metabolic one, meaning cardio. This is the muscle one. So you wanna really feel that heel connecting with the dome. If you start to toe dip, meaning that the dip goes through that foot, that means you're shutting off all of that potential in the posterior musculature. So keep the heel heavy when you can. You have 30 seconds left on this leg. Lunge, kickstand. Lunge, kickstand. And if you can, this is basically the precursor for a lunge to balance. Lunge to balance. So if you want to play with that, by all means, you got another 12 seconds to do it. Now really quickly, we're gonna switch to the other leg. So the other leg is gonna come right to the center of your dome in three, two, and one. Go ahead and hit lunge and kickstand. Lunge, kickstand. It always feels like such a relief when you switch legs on exercises like this. You're like, oh, thank God, right? But then it starts to become a reality. <laughs> and you're like, ooh, that's not any better. <laughs> the beauty of symmetry. <laughs> Remember, your kickstand is not up here. Your kickstand is foot behind you and still low through that standing leg. 20 seconds left to go. Down and kickstand. Down and kickstand. So the next one we can get really excited for. It's one that you can show off at birthday parties. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Go ahead and rest. Not so hard. Now we're gonna go on to the front of the abdominals. These are called dead bugs. They're very exciting. Um, so 
we go into this position. Boom, that's your dead bug. This is where we're gonna be working from. So the dead bug on the BOSU is different than on the floor. On the floor, it's much easier. <laughs> on the dome, you're resisting through the abdominals, resisting the curvature of the BOSU so you don't uh, just completely collapse. You have to press with your abdominals to maintain a flat spine. If this is really, really hard on your hip flexors, that might mean that you're a little bit too far forward on the dome, right? That's really hard. You wanna have your butt about, about three rings up from the edge of the dome so that your spine can lay flat and you feel like you're balanced, okay? Find that perfect position. You gotta find the sweet spot for that one. But from there, we're gonna do leg taps. We're gonna do a rock to sit like I just did. And then we're gonna just do traditional crunches with the feet on the floor, okay? So this one's gonna be 20 seconds each. So find your dead bug position. If your neck is hurting, go ahead and take one hand and hold it, okay? From here, just tap one leg and then the other for 20 seconds starting now. Go for it. So still trying to maintain the pressure. The dynamic of this exercise is all about maintaining your spinal position. The legs are just trying to throw you off. You're almost done. Then we're gonna go into a rock to sit in three, two, one, all right rock and sit and then try to find it again <sighs> find the sweet spot rock to sit and then find the sweet spot if that's easy for you try doing it with one leg out it'll change your gravity <sighs> down and out <laughs> three two and one all right moving on now we're gonna go into just regular crunches. So the butt is gonna go a little bit further down on the plat the closer to the platform, just a little bit. Hands are gonna go on top of the heads. And then from here, you're gonna try and push into the curvature of the BOSU as we do crunches, pushing in. So on the dome, you're gonna find that this is much harder than doing crunches on the floor. To make this easier, you would bring your butt further down towards the front. It just takes some of the leverage off, okay? If you want to go harder, you scoot up. Three, two, and rest. Whew. We are going to do that again, because why not, right? <laughs> Just the dead bug taps. So, so 15 seconds for each of them. That means you're going to have to maneuver between these a little bit more. So very specifically, 15 seconds for each of them. Dead bug leg taps, then sit-ups, then crunches. Here we go. Ready? So I'm early. Set. <laughs> and find your dead bug and start your taps. I missed. <laughs> leg tap. Leg tap. I'm still not in the right position. Here we go. Leg tap. Leg tap. You're almost done. Four, three, two, and rock to sit. <sighs> Option to extend one leg. Rock to sit. Extend. Rock to sit. <sighs> the next one's going to be crunches. <sighs> Find where you're going to work and begin. Crunches up. Four, three, two, and one. All right. I have one last little series for you. We're only going to do this one one time each side. But it's a funky one. So the core is more than just what's in front. We have to get the sides and the back as well. So one knee is going to go on the center of the dome. I'm going to show you all three exercises in this one. So hands can be either beginner, intermediate, advanced. Okay, for this first exercise. You're gonna lean away from the straightened leg to get your oblique. That's your first exercise. Second exercise, arms are gonna be beginner, meteor, advanced, hinge back into a flat back. So my butt goes back and then I try to keep my spine long. That's for your low back and glute. Then the last one, you're gonna hold it and we're gonna repeat those taps that we did before. Just a second set of the exact same thing we did before. Okay, here we go. <sighs> 20 seconds each, ready, set, beginner, medium, medium, advanced, go. Try to keep a long spine. That's the name of the game for this whole series, long spine. 
In five seconds, we're gonna go for the forward reach. So the butt's gonna go back. Here we go, ready, set, go. So out and up, or out and up, or out and up. You're gonna feel this in your butt. It's cool. <laughs> Four, three, two, hands to the dome, and then tap. Tapping long leg, back and side, back and side, back and side. Almost done, almost done. Three, two, one, rest. All right, nothing left to do but do the other side. Here we go, so knee on the center of the dome, set yourself up, long spine, choose your level and I'm early. Ready, <laughs> set, and go to the side. 20 seconds. Getting ready to go to your flat backs forward. Remember, the butt goes back. Ready, set, and go. Hinge the butt. Long spine. Think like you're draping yourself over the floor. And then back up. 10 more seconds. And then get ready for the leg taps. Ready, set, hands to the dome, and tap it out. 20 seconds. Still long spine, just to close this out, and rest. All right, from here we're just gonna stretch out. Take the knees down to the floor, hands are still on the dome, and just come back into a kind of a pseudo child's pose, dropping the chest and broadening the shoulders. And then come on up from here on your hands and knees, widen the knees out and just go for an easy twist of the spine, opening side to side, feeling the vertebrae loosen up. Try to keep the neck soft and the shoulder down. You're almost done. Three, two, and one. Come on up into a position where you can place one knee on the dome and we're just going to square off the hips and hinge it forward, pressing through the hip flexor and then add the arm reach at the top. And then from here, hinge back and just find an easy hamstring stretch. Hands go to the dome and you just flex your heel and bow the head to the toes. One more breath and then come on up, switch the legs. Knee on the dome, square off the hips. Push forward from the pelvis to feel the stretch in the hip flexor on that bottom leg and then add the arm, just the icing on the cake. One more breath and then go ahead and take it back. Hinge into a hamstring stretch that feels comfortable for you. Flexing the foot if you want to. One more good breath. And then come up, hands go onto the dome. Last thing is what we put in the warm up. Just go ahead and sit from one hip to the other, opening up the inner thighs. All those hip stabilizers that did so much work for you. About two more times and roll it up. That is all that I have for you for today. Thank you for doing BOSU with me, and I hope to see you next time. Hey, did you enjoy class? I hope so. So if you're interested in taking more classes with me, there's tons of ways to sign up. So to get yourself into class, all you gotta do is decide if you wanna do a membership or if you want to do class by class. If you wanna go class by class, you just buy five class pass, 10 class pass, 20 class pass, however you want, or you can opt to be a member. There are two types of membership. You can either be a full access member where you get access to everything, all the classes on demand anytime, plus the full video library of constantly updated classes. I record every class I do every week and you'll have access to take those classes 
anytime you want. We also have the video only membership, which gives you the option to have access to that full library without going to the full throttle membership. Now that's for people who might have more uh, unpredictable schedules or maybe the class times don't work for you. That option is available to you as well. Plus with membership, you also get access to full uh, discounts, you get access to uh, a lot of giveaways, tons of tons of options uh, with memberships. And you can choose from a huge variety of class types, from flexibility training classes like flowing flexibility, foam roll, all the way to strength conditioning, uh, bar classes, balaton classes, or some of the high intensity interval training like HIIT, uh, Tabata, all that stuff is available to you. And just by having an active pass of any kind, either a membership or a class pass, you have access to an updated library of classes the whole time, whenever you want. And just by participating, you get to be a part of the rewards program, which is points that go directly towards dollars, which you can put towards free fitness gear, uh, free classes, special events, membership payments, all kinds of stuff. So points equals dollars. You get points just simply by taking class, by being there, by showing up, by helping share on social media the things that you did with Ken Scott Fitness. Tons of ways to get points, tons of ways to spend them. Super, super fun, and it's super engaging as well. So I hope you like what you saw, and if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me at ken at kenscottfitness.com. I'd love to hear from you, and hopefully I'll see you in class.